Hello and welcome to another episode of the Evolvepreneur Secret Show for Entrepreneurs. I'm your host, Brian Silverthorne, and my mission is always to help entrepreneurs make a difference in their businesses and to navigate the messy worlds of uh, startup growth or relaunch. And today, I dig deep. Today is Brandon Leibowitz, and Brandon is it. SEO optimizer. He's been doing that since 2007. And his agency is a digital marketing company that's focused on helping small and medium sized businesses get more online traffic, which uh, in turn converts into clients and sales and leads, which we all want. So how you doing, Brandon? Welcome to the show. I'm doing well. Thanks for having me on today. Good. Happy to have you here. So can you start by just giving us a little bit of your background, how you got to what you're doing today, what your current focus is? Yeah, I just kind of fell into this digital marketing world back in 2007, got my degree in business marketing. And the first job I got out of school was helping out a company with their digital marketing, helping out with like search engine optimization, social media, doing email marketing, helping out with like paid ads. And I was doing it all back then for them. I just realized that back in 2007, that everyone's probably gonna have a website in the future. And there's a lot of different ways to get traffic, but SEO is just a way to get free traffic. So just really focused on that over the years, working at different advertising agencies and always building up my freelance business to where I was able to build it up to be able to quit my job and focus solely on my company. Well, good. Congratulations. You know, a lot, a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of people, they, they get to the point where they either uh, feel more comfortable doing it on their own, want the freedom of doing it on their own, whatever it happens to be. But if you can if you can break away and figure out the business aspect of it and get it done on your own, so much the better. So um, have you got, I mean, how long have you been doing it on your own? Has that been since 2007 or is that just when your overall experience started? So in 2007, they would take me to class. So they didn't know much about digital marketing. I didn't know much about it either. So they took me to classes, workshops, seminars, and let me learn alongside with them. And at a lot of these classes, they would talk about well, how you could be your own boss, how you could be build your own website and just do kind of like freelance work. And I've always had that entrepreneurial spirit. So once I went to a couple of those classes, seminars, I realized, hey, I could just do this freelance. So started my company. While as and it was just to get some extra side income. I wasn't 100 percent dedicated to this company. I was working full time, and I was happy to be working full time after I graduated from college. So I was like, hey, if I could make some extra money by picking up a few extra clients here and there, why not do that? So did that for a while, till I was like, maybe I should really focus on this. And then I really focused on it and put a lot more time and effort in. But before that, it was just more of doing it before work or after work or on weekends or on lunch break sometimes. Just doing a little bit of extra work just to make some extra money, but really like the entrepreneurial side of things of being your own boss and, you know, I'll just go to like a local restaurant and be like, Hey, do you want to make it the top of Google? I'll help you get up there and just building that up from there. Oh, well, great. Good. Excellent. So uh, what's your vision or plans for the company growth wise over the next 12 months, let's say. I'm um, just keep on growing right now. Been growing very quickly and just keep on, hiring more people and building a team up and potentially offering some more services that could help out a little bit more because with digital, it's not just like over the years, I've realized SEO is what I focused on over the years, but SEO just gets you traffic. Once you get traffic, what happens to that traffic when it gets to your website? Most of the time that traffic's going to leave, it's not going to convert. So got to make sure that that traffic actually converts into sales or leads or phone calls, whatever it may be. So trying to branch off into more, other aspects to help out just the overall business and getting them more traffic that actually converts and not just getting them traffic because that's okay, only good. So it expand. But once they get to the landing page, there's, there's something else that they need to do. Maybe go through a sales funnel or other processes. That's that sort of thing. You're adding that type of. Yep. Uh, yep. So. Adding in that process. Okay, good. So do you, do, you, do you see any major roadblocks in your way that might be preventing you from getting there when you want to get there? Oh, hiring people is always tricky. So hiring, finding good employees, training them, all that stuff is a little tricky, especially when you start hiring for things that you're not expert on. So trying to find out 
what questions to ask and how to find the best candidates. But that's been a little tricky part, like some of the growing pains and just not working on the business, but working or not working in the business, but working on the business because right. that seems to happen a lot. Yeah, it's uh, I guess, especially in this market, there's there seems to be at least according to a number of people I've talked to that that finding and hiring the right people uh, is has been a, a bigger challenge lately than it than it used to be, at least according to the sources that I've talked to. So so I understand that. So uh, with the growth goals and everything, are you uh, do you have some revenue goals in mind over the next 12 months? Just to keep growing revenue, no, any specific numbers, but just want to grow month over month, which been doing that. So, but probably should make some target goals and try to aim for those. But right now, just keep on moving in the right direction and growing. Okay, gotcha. You do be consistent in your activity, and and the results will come, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, so, should make some targets. So I feel like target having some goals to try to hit those numbers gets you. Even if it's like stretch goals and reading lots of books about stuff like that, where even though make it like really a goal that's probably unattainable, it makes you work harder to try to get there. And then maybe next year you get hit that goal, but trying to set something up, I think will be a good, good idea. Good. So what, what does your ideal client look like? And uh, right now, how do they find you? Usually it's small, medium sized businesses and they'll find me from searching on Google for my keywords. So making sure I rank for those keywords or they'll find me on, I mean, like all over the place, Yelp, but I also teach classes. So a lot of people will come to my classes and that's a place that a lot of people find me as well, word of mouth, but usually ranking on Google. Okay, good. Well, yeah, obviously you're doing your own SEO, so that <laughs> you've got a leg up there. So do you teach your classes uh, virtually or do you do them live and in person or both? Mm -hmm. Both, well, not live right now. Haven't done a live one in a few years, unfortunately, but hopefully we can start doing them again live. But right now it's all virtual, which is nice too, because now people could come from anywhere because I live in Los Angeles. And a lot of these classes I would do on like a weekday at six o'clock and it'd be in downtown LA. You have to drive down there, find parking. It's not that easy, but I'd still get like a hundred people that would show up. But now I can wow. do it online and people will show up from anywhere. So I can get people in Australia or Japan or all over the world. So that's really nice and makes it a little bit better, I think. Well, that's great. That's great that you can do that. So I, I think I noticed in the information you provided that you have a book. Is that correct? No, not yet. No, no. Oh, thinking you're about writing thinking about writing a book. Yeah. Okay. So are you, how far along are you in the thinking and starting process? Is it just a, a kernel of thought right at the moment? Yeah. Yeah. It's a kernel of thought with a long, with a long list of other things I want to do, but okay. the book is definitely up there because I feel like that's a good way to just get more awareness, more visibility and get the name out there a little bit more. Yeah. Well, you're mentioning awareness that usually people write books for one of two reasons, or maybe both. One is it's a legacy book, so it leaves their knowledge and expertise on for people currently and, and also from uh, in, on into the future, or they do it as a lead generation book. So if and when you get around to it, you got one of those that you prefer over the other? Yeah, probably lead gen. No biography yet. Maybe in the future, but I don't think people will want to read that yet. But I mean, you never know. But I think lead gen, because I see a lot of other digital marketers doing stuff like that where- right. They'll even give it away for free. And then it becomes like a bestseller in the New York Times. And like, that's kind of interesting. But I guess that's the way to become a bestseller is write a book, give it away for free, charge for shipping and handling and make some money off of that too. Yeah, there's a number of ways to do it. But yeah, I talked to somebody last week, I think, that that said that uh, she considered her book a business card on steroids. That's the way she looked at it. So yeah, yeah that's um, how I feel like they are. They're a good way to get the word out there and more long form because there's only so much you convey on a website or a blog post or an article, but a book, you could really get deep into the weeds and explain. Right. That. Right. That's true. So also on some of the information you provided, you were, you were, uh, you either ask or mentioned um, using surveys as a lead generation tool. Have you ever done that or are you considering doing it? I've done that a little bit and it works, but usually trying to have some sort of like pop up or, something enticing on a website to try to keep people interested or hooked. So offering, if it's a survey 
or a quiz, or it might be just a pop-up offering a discount. If it's an e-commerce business saying like, here's 10% off your first order or for mine, I'll give out like a free ebook since I'm more of a service-based business, but mm -hmm. I, I test it all out seeing what works because ultimately that's just a way to capture those emails for the most part, because email is just so invaluable. Right. It is. Yeah, it's, it's an, and it's amazing how many businesses don't realize the value of their email list and just yeah. let it let it sit there, which is which is sad. So what's the what's the best piece of advice you've ever given one of your clients? I would say, um, well, important thing is usually I just tell them add more content to their website for SEO, like a good SEO tip that I would always tell them is just adding more content or adding more pages to their website. I think that's probably the biggest one is a lot of people have websites, but they're not really deep. They're not a lot of pages and you can only rank for about three to five words max per page. After that, it kind of loses relevancy. So if you're trying to target more keywords, I always tell people don't hold back, create as many pages as possible. The more pages you have, the more opportunities you have to rank for different keywords. It's kind of like, building a house. You can build a house. You can make it one story. You can make it two or three stories and you keep building and building. And the website's kind of the same. You can keep building it up and it's a lot cheaper to build a website than it is to build a house. And you can <laughs> build as many layers as you like to that website. That's true. That's true. Do you, do you help them out with the content or is, is that uh, their responsibility? A little bit of both. Like sometimes they want to write the content. Sometimes they don't have time to write the content. So I'll, I'll go in and write it. But I'll definitely go in and optimize it. So if they're writing the content, yeah. I'll go in, touch it up, put some keywords in the right places, restructure it. But it just depends on what they want to do. Yeah. So I, I've got a friend. He doesn't do it anymore, but he used to do a little search engine op optimization. But uh, I, I guess there's a the you need to know the magic formulas of search engines. I guess on 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 how they work and how they look for words and what makes words and phrases pop up. So is that a, is that a changing uh, landscape or is it something that's pretty stable? Yeah, no, Google changes pretty much every single day. So which makes it interesting, but every few months, I mean, most of these changes are very tiny. Every few months we'll have a big major update, but they're constantly changing it. They don't want to keep it the same because they don't want you to do SEO. They want you to spend money on paid ads. That's how they make oh, all yeah. their money. Oh, okay. Well, that that's makes perfect sense. Yeah. They want they want to get your money uh, rather than letting you do it for free, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. They got a good business model. They know what they're doing. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um so they're the uh when you mentioned an added number of pages to a website. Um, is there a secret to whatever the content is? Are they like multiple landing pages or informational pages or does one work best over another or is it just a matter of having volume? Um, it just depends how many keywords they're trying to target. If they're not trying to like, so a lot of people, sometimes if you're a local business, like if you're, let's say a plumber in Los Angeles, you could rank for a plumber in Los Angeles because you're located there. But if you want to rank for like in the Valley or anywhere where maybe it's like 20, 30 miles away, you kind of lose that relevancy. But if you create a page on your website saying plumber in whatever city, plumber in the Valley, plumber in Los Angeles, plumber in Santa Monica, you make all these pages. If someone's searching for a plumber in Santa Monica, that page is really relevant because they're like, okay, this page is all about plumbers in Santa Monica. This is what I'm not, this is what I'm not looking for. Not someone maybe 10, 20 miles away. So the more pages you create, the better it's just you gotta put good content out there. You can't just throw a page up there just to throw it up there. You have to have some good content that supports that page. It has to be unique. Every page has to have original content. If you take the same content from one page to another, it becomes duplicate content. Whoever publishes the content first, they get all the credit. Everyone else is not gonna rank for those keywords. So yeah, that's the one tough part is writing unique content. And usually you need about 400 words per page of content the more the better but 400 is kind of just the average that you should put on a page oh and you just answered the, the next question i was going to ask before i asked it if you could just duplicate the contact content and and uh change the location but i i guess that doesn't work huh no not really it google wants the original content so 
Okay. You know, rewrite it, restructure it around. So that's going to be the best. All right. So when you when you do your uh, when you do your classes, what's what's the focus on that? Just the one, two, three, four, five steps to SEO, or or do, or do you get deeper into things depending upon uh, um, the expertise of the of the group that's attending? Mm -hmm. Yep. So I have multiple classes. So I have some more basic or some really long classes where they're like four hours that gives us a lot more time to go in depth and really work on it. But it just, yeah, each one is different. I have some about SEO, I've done social media, I have classes about like Instagram or Facebook or Twitter, YouTube. I have ones about like how to rank on Google maps or how to rank on Yelp or how to use Google analytics and a bunch of different topics, paid ads and things like that. Okay. Wow. Sounds pretty comprehensive. So that's, that's good stuff. So, uh, we're, we're getting kind of toward the end of the flow here. Uh, can you let people know the best way to get hold of you? Obviously you're all over social media and you got your own SEA going, SEO going. Is there one particular source that brings you more business than another? Um, so the best way to get a hold of me would just be going to my website. I created a special gift for everyone. If they go to SEO optimizers.com that's s e o o p t i m i z e r s.com forward slash gift and they can find that there along with my contact information and my classes are all up there for free and if they're interested in a free consultation i'm happy to dive into the website and look at what's working what's not working and how to optimize that website from an seo point of view and they could schedule some time on my calendar there as well okay sounds good so um, any final thoughts that for people that are looking for SEO help to help them get more leads, more clients, more sales? Yeah, I mean, the content is so very important. Adding more pages to the website. Those are two things that are not technical where you don't have to go into the coding or any of that stuff because SEO does get a little tricky getting into the coding side of things, but really pages, the more pages you have and the more content you put out there, it's going to help out. And content meaning text not images, not videos. They can't really read those yet. They're getting better, but they really rely heavily on that text. The more text, the better off you're going to be. Okay, great. That's that's a good advice, a great way to end. So that's a wrap on a, another great guest episode from the uh, Entrepreneur Secret Show for Entrepreneurs. And before you go, if you like this episode, We'd be very grateful for a five-star review. And uh, if you'd be so kind, maybe share it with a couple of friends. And to make sure that you catch up on all the podcasts, please uh, go to evolvepreneursecrets.show and register there. And until next time, if you're an entrepreneur, make a start on your next great idea today.